Week four is here and it's time you win some money. I've spent over 20 hours researching this week so far. And that's good news for you because I'm about to spill all my secrets. These are the best plays for week four. And we must talk about this $6,000 wide receiver, Deontay Johnson, because he's currently coming in as the highest owned wide receiver on the slate. And it makes sense. He's going up against a poor Jets secondary, borderline bottom five in the NFL, and he is a highly projected player this week. So what's the issue with this? Well, there's a lot of issues in my opinion. Starting with the fact that his quarterback as of this week is still Mitchell Trubisky, yet Deontay Johnson is coming in with very confident ownership is what ownership says it shows people's confidence in a player 20 percent is a big number and now the positive thing is that he's seen 10 plus targets every single week and he's basically scoring 12 plus points so if he does that at 6 000 it doesn't harm you but in a gpp at that ownership you need 20 plus and i truthfully question his ability to do that because he's not being targeted downfield just 5.9 yards per target is outside the top 75 receivers this year and check this out i tweeted about this but he has 21 receptions this year and he has negative six total yards after the catch meaning he's getting a lot of short catches and being tackled on most of these right when he catches the ball or even bouncing back a couple yards so this is concerning because it's showing he's not having explosive play upside he needs this volume he doesn't even have a red zone target on the year so because of this i choose other wide receivers who are half as owned or even less and we'll talk about those players in a second and i'd even choose his own teammate chase claypool at lower ownership if you want to get ultimate leverage i prefer taking his over 39 and a half receiving prop you can do this as well with a free bet up to 100 dollars with the link in the bio to pricepicks.com so that's a polarizing wide receiver this week let's talk about a running back and really it's going to be the bears back backfield whether it's david montgomery starting and if he doesn't start then back up khalil herbert but for montgomery if he starts i want to be playing him at just 6200 because he's facing the giants defense that right now ranks 25th in run d and montgomery went healthy this year looks solid week two against the packers when he's trailing by two or three scores the whole game he's still able to go out there see four red zone carries and he ends up putting up 136 total yards he's a top 10 running back on the week that's while he's trailing and now he's going to be in a matchup against the giants where they might actually have a lead at one point now of course if he misses i'm going to go to khalil herbert who's really affordable herbert is just 57 700 dollars in this exact same matchup he saw 92 percent of the snaps in the second half when montgomery left the game last week and oh yeah he put up 150 total yards and in four career starts without david montgomery he averages over 22 opportunities and 14 fantasy points per game would easily pay off his DraftKings salary now the bears running backs will pick up some ownership but this seattle running back in my ownership projections link down below on patreon is just two percent owned and he's definitely a risky play but it's 4900 rashad penny mainly want to point him out because he's the only running back below five thousand dollars that i want to be playing this week and the first positive is that seattle ran seven 71 plays last week normally they're running like 50 plays dead last in the league that's where they ranked last year that's awful but 71 plays means more rushing attempts and touchdown upside for a shot penny and now he has a great matchup against the detroit lions that ranked 30th out of 32 teams third worst in the nfl and run defense this year and even last week with kenneth walker back he still played 66 percent of the snaps for shot penny but he's not going to see the passing down usage so he's likely touchdown or bust but it's a good matchup at two percent owned and he's cheap that's the point here and another cheap player who's going to see a lot of upside this week is going to be richie james at just four thousand dollars this week against the chicago bears in their poor secondary yes please because sterling shepherd is now out for the year and both rookie wide receiver wando robinson and second year player Kadarius tony haven't practiced yet this week they're trending to miss which would mean james would operate as the number one receiver and so far this season he's been pretty dang good in three games he's seen at least five targets in each game and in this last game in prime time against the cowboys he ran 38 routes played 76 percent of the snaps he operated as the number one receiver when shepherd went down and now he will for the entire game and speaking of number one receivers let's go to green bay where rookie romeo dobbs is also cheap forty five hundred dollars yet again another value option that we're going to need this week because the quarterbacks oh baby they're expensive but Dobbs scored 20 plus points and he led the Packers with 34 routes run and eight targets he caught them all as well he was the cleared wide receiver one in the offense and now he gets to face the New England Patriots who ranked 28th in secondary coverage right now they lost their best cornerback in free agency they're dealing with injuries and they're just not nearly as good as a couple years back all of this boils down to I like him in DFS and I definitely like him over 39 and a half receiving yards I have him in the 50s right now you can take this prop with a free bet up to $100 if it's your first deposit with the link in the description and code SAL22 that's S A L 22 free bet up to 100 bucks. Now let's talk about another value wide receiver and a pivot off of Deontay Johnson. We'll talk about a couple of pivots off of Deontay, but we'll start with $5,900 Tyler Lockett, who's been good, and now he faces Detroit, who ranks 30th in secondary coverage. And his individual matchup in the slot is going to be against Mike Hughes, who currently, according to PFF, is the number 95 graded cornerback in coverage out of 103 cornerbacks. That is not good. And he actually has a top five matchup on the week. So play Tyler Lockett and also play this quarterback. So the quarterback situation this week is like a couple of really expensive guys. Then there's Kyler Murray and Herbert who have their own flaws injury for Herbert Kyler Murray's offense all over the place and then it's cheaper players but Lamar Jackson at $8,300 sandwiched in between Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen is actually coming in relatively low owned he's coming in at just 7% ownership this week even though he scored 40 points in back-to-back weeks now this week he will face the number one pass rush in the NFL in the Buffalo Bills they're also top five in secondary despite having a load of injuries back there and they're getting slightly healthier heading into this week but here's the thing Lamar is fantastic he has a cheat code because of his legs and oh yeah he has Mark Andrews and my guess as to 
why he's lower owned than Hertz and Josh Allen is they have more stacking options for DFS. Lamar basically has just Mark Andrews and he's an expensive tight end. But you're looking at Mark Andrews the wrong way. Because yes, he's $7,100 right now, but on the season so far through three games, he has 21.6 fantasy points. By far the most at the tight end position. This would rank sixth amongst wide receivers. So stop looking at Andrews as a tight end and look at him as a $7,100 wide receiver with this grade of usage and he starts to look pretty cheap. And this number right here, 96.6% route participation, how many times he's running a route when Lamar Jackson drops back is nearly 20% higher than last year. He's on the field more, seeing more targets, and it's paying off. But he's not just seeing any targets. He's seeing the most valuable, the fantasy cheat code targets. And those are the deep targets of 20 plus yards. He has five already of those. And the red zone targets, you know, that lead to touchdowns. He already has six of those. This is insanely good usage. Play him in your stacks with Lamar. And I've taken his over receiving yards prop each week. It's basically hit over 64 and a half. I got it at 61 and a half with that free bet up to $100. If you're a first time depositor, use it or lose it right now. Linked in the description below take the over here now let's talk about a running back leverage play and leverage just means lower owned than you should be lower owned than your actual upside and optimal chances of being in the winning lineup and that's seventy five hundred dollar aaron jones who's coming off of a stinker the man scored just 6.7 points last week on 16 total opportunities but now he has a much better matchup this week against the patriots where he's going to be a favorite their bottom 10 and run defense and he's not going to be owned we know the upside he has week two he scored 33 DraftKings points and now let's talk about an obvious play but he's dealing with injury as of this recording christian mccaffrey was not at thursday practice the same thing happened last week and then Schefter on friday said that there's no issues he's going to play so we'll see what happens here but if he does indeed play at eighty seven hundred dollars i think he's still strongly in play as my highest projected player on the slate because right now mccaffrey still even though he's not producing like it has the number one opportunity in the nfl 89 percent of the carolina panthers running backs targets and touches have gone to christian mccaffrey 21 per game the issue is right now they're just not throwing the ball whatever reason baker is not checking down to the running back they're gonna have to switch this and i think they're noticing it they've kind of made some comments in the media this week but we need more than two or four receptions in a game we need those seven and eight catch games for him to pop off if so he's way too cheap he needs to be 10,000 plus on DraftKings and now speaking of guys who are approaching 10,000 plus let's go back surprisingly to the quarterback position this man Josh Allen is insane he's 8,400 he's currently coming into my ownership projections on Patreon which you can get down below projections rankings and optimizer a strategy show where I tell you exactly every single player I'm playing at what percentages what stacks all of that and a whole lot more link down below on Patreon be sure to sign up but Josh Allen is going to be the highest owned quarterback as of right now this week around 14 percent owned he'll be lower owned though in his stacks which is good to see but he Here's the thing about Josh Allen. Last week was the worst case scenario. They're playing in intense heat from players from Buffalo. Everybody's fainting and having problems and sweating and the offense struggled. Yet Josh Allen still put up over 400 yards of total offense when you factor in his rushing yards, two touchdowns, and yeah, 26.7 fantasy points. 30 fantasy points if you count DraftKings bonuses. That is insane. This is the worst case scenario. And now we're on a slate where there's no Mahomes, Tom Brady, Matt Stafford, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert is hurt. So guys like Josh Allen are going to be even higher chances of being in the optimal lineup. And his number one stacking option is obvious it's $8,400 Steph Diggs so that's why I bring up Rashad Penny because he's cheap and has some upside that's why we bring up some of those cheaper $4,000 receivers and we'll bring up some more so you can fit in these top end stacks that's what you want to prioritize this week because so far on the season he's been fantastic he's faced guys like Jalen Ramsey no issues he's gone off guys like Xavier Howard last week he ends up earning 11 targets and catches seven of them he's been fantastic I mean 27 year old two years ago Diggs was his peak form he might be going right back to this as a 29 year old he's earning over 11 targets per game and already has seven seven you count him seven red zone targets on the year that's upside and now another stacking option for buffalo is gabe davis who comes in at 6600 it's honestly pretty expensive for a guy who has been playing injured and banged up but the matchup is just so good and this is kind of the underlying point for all of this for josh allen for stefan Diggs, and yes gabe davis baltimore gives up the most points to the wide receiver position and 29 percent more receiving yards to receivers than any other team now track gabe davis's status he's limited in practice this week he was last week and it showed in the game because davis did end up playing basically the entire game 90 percent of the snaps ran 58 routes saw six targets but he was clearly clearly limited out there let's see if he's healthier this week and now specifically in these stacks for buffalo a cheap option to get in your lineups if you're just looking for salary relief and a punt at the tight end is 3800 dawson knox who has not been good this year but he did see his most usage 36 routes run 70 percent of the snaps which was good in the last game when they were trailing maybe we get a little bit more of that in this one but overall it is pretty concerning just 66 percent of the time josh allen drops back is dawson knox running around he's blocking a lot more this year because their biggest concern on their entire offense is their offensive line so he's staying in the block we don't like that for fantasy but what we do like is when those tight ends start to actually run routes and that's what happened with this next guy and that's $3,700 David Njoku who ran more routes last week it led to 10 targets 90 receiving yards and a touchdown but because of that he's going to be higher on this week and I'd rather just say hey if Dalton Schultz is going to play this week for $200 more I'll take him at way less ownership because on his two game sample before injury Dalton Schultz has ran around on 92 percent of the Cowboys dropbacks which is going to lead to a lot of upside he's not blocking at all and speaking of a lot of upside 
upside, let's head to Philadelphia. And I'm looking at you, Mr. AJ Brown at $7,400. He might become the next $8,000 wide receiver in DraftKings in just a couple of weeks. He is the number three overall matchup on the week against the Jaguars, number 28 tackling unit. And this matters because AJ Brown ranks second in yards after the catch. He's been insanely efficient getting open number one versus man coverage right now. 45% of the time that he runs a route versus man coverage, he's being targeted. This is like insane efficiency, historic efficiency. And oh yeah, not to mention he's going to have an advantage against these cornerbacks this week. See for yourself. AJ Brown weighs about 230 pounds and every single one of these Jaguars defenders, as you can see right here, are under 200 pounds. He's going to have nearly a 30 pound advantage on all of them. And that's basically benefited him to being a top 10 receiver so far this year. Expect another big week. And if he's having a big week, it means his quarterback, Jalen Hurts, also is. Now Hurts in my ownership projections on Patreon. If you don't have ownership projections and you're playing in GPPs, you're literally just burning your money on fire. You need that extra peek behind the curtain, if you will, to know what the field is going to be doing so you can do the opposite and win more money. So you can get those down below on Patreon if you would like it, the link in the description. But Hertz is the second highest on quarterback as of right now, only behind Josh Allen, and it makes sense. Back-to-back -back weeks of 300 yards passing. He's looked fantastic out there, throwing the ball downfield more. His yards per attempt, 9.3 per attempt, leads the entire NFL. He's the most efficient quarterback. Who thought you'd be saying that a year ago about Jalen Hurts? And according to Pro Football Focus, Philadelphia has the fifth best pass blocking advantage this week of plus 21%. 21% better than average. A good spot for Hertz who will have time. And also a good spot for his tight end who's been quietly elite. Look, Dallas Goddard is way too cheap and one of these weeks, if not this week in a beneficial matchup, he is going to pop off for 20 plus points. Because as you can see from my tweet on the season, Goddard is first in tight end yards after the catch, first in yards per target, and third in yards per route run. Right now he has been insanely efficient. He just needs to see more than four targets in a game. When that happens, he's going to pop off. And because of that, I take Dallas Goddard over nine fantasy points, something that he's been doing week in and week out on low volume. Let's see him get some high volume you take that on prizepicks.com with your free bet up to $100 the link in the description code sal22 sal22 all right it's about time we talk about the best running back play in the slate if you don't know now you know that DeAndre Swift is likely to miss this week and Jamal Williams at $6,100 is the best play on the slate he's a top 10 running back in fantasy right now when Swift is active believe it or not now Swift is not going to be out there and he gets to benefit from a matchup against the Seattle Seahawks who ranked 29th against the run and and they give up the third most points to the running back position perfect time for Jamal Williams but I have even more positive news for you beautiful for people. The Lions are actually four point favorites this week. When you're a favorite at the running back position, it means you get more touches in the second half. And they have a 28 point team total. They're implied to score more than four touchdowns, right? Six times four, that's 24. More than four touchdowns. Expect Jamal Williams to score this week. And the same can be said for this next RB. Because Josh Jacobs has been insanely efficient. He's just $5,500 this week. He does have a difficult matchup against Denver, but here's the thing. His opportunity share is fantastic. Easily expect 15 plus opportunities, touches, and targets for him this week. He started to get more targets last week. He's seen 79% of the Raiders backfield targets and touches. The only reason he's not more expensive is because he hasn't scored a touchdown yet, but he has nine red zone touches on the year. This is big, big upside for him. And he's been efficient as well. I'll take his over 61 and a half rushing yards on prize picks with that free bet down below. You can as well or any of the other ones we talked about. And now let's talk about a beast, a beast rookie wide receiver. And that's first round pick Traylon Burks, who comes in in the $4,000 range. A lot of great $4,000 wide receivers this week at $4,700. I like Traylon Burks, who led the team last week in routes run. You don't believe me? Well, here you go. He played 67% of the snaps. You could see his role is increasing 36 percent 47 percent 67 percent and now he runs 27 routes by far the most he's had in the season he's going to start earning more targets because through the first two weeks he was insanely efficient these are Devonte adams type numbers in terms of how he's getting open seventh in wide receiver efficiency fourth in yards after the catch per target and fifth in targets per route now that he's running more routes that's going to lead to big gains so play Traylon burks and here's another pivot now off of deontay johnson and we're heading to houston where 5800 brandon cooks will probably be half as owned as deontay johnson and that's an issue because cooks right now is seeing insane volume he has seen 29 targets on the year which ranks top 15 in the league and he's being used all over the field in the slot on the outside so for half the ownership is Deontay for a guy seeing similar volume with a similar quarterback situation I like that and I also like Cortland Sutton in his matchup against a bottom seven secondary in Las Vegas Sutton at 6400 is another pivot off of Deontay and unlike Deontay Sutton is being easily used downfield and this leads to explosive upside because on the season Sutton right now has seen 100 air yards in every single game that he's played and he's averaging over 120 air yards per game that means downfield usage and he has the beautiful news he has the fantasy cheat codes meaning those deep targets of 20 plus yards yeah he's got six of those third most in the league and he's already seen four red zone targets 10 10 fantasy cheat code targets through three games is great news now this next guy might not be the greatest of news but he's a leverage at the quarterback position and that's Derek Carr who there's going to be some positives and negatives the positives and it's mainly game theory he's below 6,000 so he's cheap he's coming in lower owned right now he has a 24 point team total so it's not awful but the negatives this match up bad I mean it's real bad the Denver Broncos right now rank top three in both pressure getting to Derek Carr he's not good under pressure and secondary coverage that's not good either but if you want
want a cheaper quarterback so you can pay up in other areas, you kind of have to hope that all the top end quarterbacks bust. Well, I would go to Derek Carr then and stack him with Devontae Adams. Now, outside of that, because of these guys being in good matchups like Geno Smith and Mitch Trubisky, they're going to grade out as decent plays because they're cheap, but they lack a real ceiling. I'd rather just play their props. Like Trubisky, we played his over passing yards last week and it got there late in the game. We're taking him over 212 and a half passing yards in this matchup as well. He played a little bit better, actually decently better on Thursday Night Football. We'll take that as well for our final prop in this video, the over Trubisky. Use that code SAL22 with the link in the description for a free bet. And now let's talk about a letdown wide receiver who we're hoping is not a letdown this week and it's going to be $5,300. He's so damn cheap at this point and it's DJ Moore who his coaching staff has let him down. They're running an awful offense and yes, his quarterback is also letting him down because as you can see from my tweet right here, DJ Moore, he's seen 18 targets on the year. Only 50% of them, nine have been deemed catchable. The other ones he can't even attempt. They're just pointless, which ranks 92nd amongst receivers. But the good news, it's now or never because of this last line here. Arizona's secondary ranks dead last, 32nd in the NFL. Now or never DJ Moore. And also now or never for his teammate, $4,700 Robbie Anderson, who I know he kind of got his week one on that big blown coverage, but I'd rather play DJ Moore for just $600 more money. And I'd also rather play Joshua Palmer over Robbie Anderson, assuming Keenan Allen is out. At $5,000, Joshua Palmer played 93% of the snaps, earned eight targets, and yet again, another touchdown last week. In three starts now without Keenan Allen, dating back to his rookie year last year, he averages eight targets per game. Very, very good. And 15 and a half fantasy points. Another week, hopefully, for Herbert to get healthy. If there's no Keenan Allen, $5,000 flat, Josh Palmer is going to be lower owned. And speaking of the Chargers and some of their lower owned players, let's go to the tight end position. And we're talking about Gerald Everett, who is $4,000 flat. And look, he laid a stinker the last game, and it's not going to be that big of an issue, though, because he actually saw more usage. 78% of the snaps. This is good to see. He wasn't a, a part time player. Instead of playing 60% of the snaps, almost 80% of the snaps, still ran 34 outs and saw six targets. The problem, he only puts up in this game four and a half fantasy points, but that's going to lead to a lot lower ownership, lower ownership and a lower price tag at 4K for him this week. And according to PFF, he has the number one matchup advantage against the Houston linebackers who give up an 84% catch rate on the season and the fifth most yards per out. For an athletic tight end who's good after the catch like Everett, this is good news. So I consider Everett a cheaper option. I'd consider the 20 or so players that we talked good about and bad about in this video when you're making your lineups this week. Make this your player pool. And be sure to get the ownership projections and take advantage of all those tools down below if you actually want to be winning money for week four. Best of luck, you beautiful people, and I'll see you on the live stream right here on this channel on Sunday morning.